The rest of you all, if you would do me a favor and turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 17. And if you are not in the habit of bringing your Bible to church, uh, there's always something on the shelf when you first walk in back there. But I do want to encourage you to get in the habit uh, of bringing your Bible. I just think that as we become more and more a people that is in the Word, that's, that's reading our Bibles, that you will find uh, when the Lord kind of speaks to you through a scripture verse or through a message that you'll make notes in your Bible. And then when you're going back through doing your devotions, you'll come across those notes or highlighted verses. Uh, there's some people that come to me and, and they say, hey, I, I, we, we talked about this verse another time because I have it highlighted and I have different notes written in there. And you know, I came across that verse in my, in my devotions because I, I wrote a question there or something. And, and I just think that, that it really takes our Bibles, this book that can be so unbelievably intimidating, and it makes it personal to us because now there's a little bit of ownership in there. And that, that's what I want to encourage you to do. Bring your Bibles to church if you're comfortable doing that. Matthew chapter 17. You guys, we're just going to read two verses today and then take a peek at those two verses. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22. Is Jackson here today? No? Okay. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22. It says this. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. And, and then we're going to stop right there. And, and so, just so that you understand, so this is Jesus talking. He's talking to his disciples, and, and he refers to himself often throughout the scriptures as the Son of Man. So what he's telling the disciples is that he is going to go and that he's going to be crucified, but on the third day be raised to life. There's a piece of this that, that really is what we're going to end up focusing on, and that's that last part that says, And the disciples were filled with grief. See, I think it's very normal for us when we're in a situation, when we're going through struggles, difficult times, to focus just on those difficult times. It's hard for everything, all of our energy, all of our focus to be on the struggle. And that's what I see through these two verses right here. Because if we pay close attention, what we see is that Jesus tells them, really, he tells them, in my opinion, two different things, doesn't he? He says, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. I'm going to be killed. That's, one, that's, that's the first thing he says. That's the struggle. And I think what happens is that that's the part where then the disciples kind of stop listening. And, and I think the same is true in our life. I know it's true when it comes to sermons. You guys get to a point where it's like, I don't like no more. I'm done. Some of literally leave. Sometimes when we're reading our Bibles, we come across a verse. We come across a portion of Scripture. It's like, I don't like this part, so I'm done listening. Sometimes in a relationship, it can get to a point where your partner, your friend, says something, and it's like, well, I'm done listening now because you just said something that I don't like. This now becomes the situation. And then all of our focus is on that part. And we're done, we're done listening. You guys, when we're going through stuff, not if we're going through difficult times, but when we're going through difficult times. And I know some of your circumstances right now, some of you, you're going through difficult times. There is no doubt about it. Life is very hard. There's all kinds of circumstances happening in life right now. It might be social things, it might be health things, it might be financial things, it might be spiritual things. It, it could be any number of issues that are being dealt with in this room. Addiction. And it's easy for our entire focus to be on the struggle. And as a matter of fact, I think if we're honest, I think it's normal for that to, to be what happens, isn't it? I mean, we kind of, that becomes... And, and, and as I'm thinking about this message, what I want to do is I want to get up and say, what's wrong with us? Why are we so focused on our struggles? Why do we focus so much on, on this pain and on that pain and on this? And, and of course, then processing through, I get balanced out a little bit. Yeah, but it's kind of natural, isn't it? And then I back away. Yeah, it is, it is natural for us to do that. 
The disciples' response to Jesus' words are very natural. But today, what I, want to, what I want to encourage us with is this. It's so simple today, you guys. Don't forget about God. That's the message today. Is don't forget about God. See, because what the disciples get focused on right here, they get focused on the human aspect of this situation. And what they dismiss is the God aspect of the situation. The God aspect, AJ, is the part where he says, and I'm going to be raised to life. I'm going to be killed. Yep, that's the, that's, the, that's the human aspect of this. It's like, yeah, and that's painful, and that hurts, and that's scary, and, and what are we going to do, and, and where are you going to go, and all of these things. But the God side of all of this is, but I'm going to be raised to life. Now, the Bible says they were filled with grief, and when I read it, I'm like, what's wrong with you guys? You missed the biggest part of what he just said. The biggest part is, yeah, I'm going to die. I'm going to be buried. Yeah, all this is going to happen. But... I'm going to be raised to life. But it says they grieved. And you see, it's, it's natural for that to happen. It's natural for us to get focused on our struggle. It's natural for us to, to get consumed by difficulties. But what I want to encourage us with today is... If you're in that struggle right now, don't forget about God. And if you're not in a struggle right now, don't dismiss this message because I think most of us in the room know maybe you're not going through a difficult time right now, but it's only a matter of time, <laughs> right? Who knows what tomorrow may bring? I was talking with somebody yesterday, there, yesterday and it, this guy was like, man, 2019, it was, it was such a great year with such great momentum and, you know, going towards 2020. And then within the first couple weeks of 2020, it's kind of like all hell breaks loose in aspects of my life that I didn't expect it to. You know why? Because no one knows what tomorrow's going to bring. And as, a, as believers, I think if we kind of set our minds on what our minds ought to be set on, then when that struggle comes... It's not going to take us out so much. It's still going to be natural to get focused on it, but we're not going to forget about God. Don't forget about God amidst your struggles. Turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. It's the second book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus. Yep, it's the second book of the Bible. <laughs> that rolled off my tongue too fast, and I didn't think about it. Al, what if I'd have been wrong right there? You'd have got up and said, heck with this guy. Exodus, the book of Exodus. You see, guys, if we look at our struggles through the filter of simply our strength, if we look at our situations simply through what we can do, then we dismiss everything that God can do. Amen? Amen? We forget about what he's capable of because we only look at it through the filter of what I'm capable of. And if we're really honest with ourselves, which we're usually not in church, but if we try to be, if we're really honest with ourselves, we would come to the conclusion, I'm not capable of a whole lot. <laughs> right? right? When it comes to getting through our struggles, life is really difficult. And to, to try and walk through it all on our own, man, that's a tough thing to do. When we dismiss what God can do, that really handicaps what we're able to, to accomplish. In Exodus chapter 14, I, I want to read this piece because the book of Exodus, just so we're all on the same page here, so the book of Exodus, it's, just, it's basically about that, the Exodus. These Israelites that have been in Egypt, have been enslaved in Egypt, are being mistreated in Egypt, and God sends Moses to Egypt to bring the Israelites up out and set them free. The Exodus. That's what the book of Exodus is essentially about. And what I'm going to read is kind of one example, I think kind of the first example, of the Israelite people doing exactly what we're talking about today. When they come upon a struggle... What they want to do is they want to turn and go back to Egypt. 
even though they were mistreated, even though they were abused, even though it was a terrible place for them to be, instead of facing this struggle, instead of going at it with, with faith in God, they say, we can't do this, and so they want to go back. Now, here's the thing. If we were to go around this room, I can't help but wonder how many of us have done that over and over and over again in our lives. We sit in church and say, yep, I believe in God. The struggles hit, and we dismiss God. And right away, we even, we even run back to terrible things in our lives. Addiction, unhealthy relationships. I'd rather go be with this guy or this girl than be alone, and so I'm willing to sacrifice my own health because I just don't want to be alone, because I can't handle being alone. And so we go back to that. There's so many. Don't raise your hands. Don't nod, because I don't want to know. But I know it's true. <laughs> I know it's true. Too many of you, you do that too quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to know. Scott's over here nodding his head, and I'm thinking, man, you're, you're, don't do that. Glory's right next to you. But that, and then he just starts going like this, like, I don't know what to do right now. But you guys understand what I'm saying. And so we know that, yet how many of us repeat the same thing because we dismiss God from the equation. That's what the Israelites do over and over and over again during the Exodus. We get so focused on the problem and our own ability to deal with the problem that we dismiss the God aspect. You guys, don't forget about God. Amen? Amen? Exodus chapter 14, starting in verse 10. So here's where we're at in this story. The Israelites have come up out of Egypt. Moses is leading them. And, and Pharaoh now has realized, hey, you know what? I, this, why did I let my people go? Or why did I let these people go? Why, I, I, I'm going to go after them. And so now Pharaoh and his army, they're chasing down the Israelites. And the Israelites are, are in a difficult situation because they're looking at the Red Sea in front of them and these army come behind him, and that's where we really pick this up. And, and I just want to illustrate here the way the Israelites respond to this struggle. In verse 10, it says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. So before we even look at that, do you see the mindset of the, of, of the Israelite people? They're seeing in front of them what, what's there. It's like, how are we going to do this? Priscilla, that's what they're looking at. He, he, just, he just goes, yep. We'll just open the door for them when they come so they don't disrupt things, okay? Here's what they're, here's what they're doing. What they're doing is they're looking at the sea and they're thinking, I can't do anything with that. And then they're looking at the army coming behind them and they're saying this. Listen, they're saying, I can't do anything about that. What are they focusing on? They're focusing on what they can do. Matthew 17, don't turn there, I'm just referencing it. Jesus says, I'm going to be killed. I can't do anything about that. And that becomes the focus. The Israelites, over and over again, during the years that they wandered in the wilderness, when they came upon a struggle, we don't have any food. I can't do anything about that. Let's just go back to Egypt where we were mistreated. Their focus was on the issue and on what they could do and not do. We don't have anything to drink. We have an army coming against us. All of these different things, the situation became their entire focus because they looked at it through the eyes of what they could do instead of what God could do. You guys, don't forget about God when you go through difficult times. And if we're honest, that's what we do, isn't it? We get ourselves in a tough time and God quickly gets dismissed from the equation. And I understand it. Man, we can't, we ought not do that. 
Verse 13, it says, And Moses said to the people, he says, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Now again, you guys, I, I want to reiterate this. I understand their mindset, because I, I want you to know something. If I'm, if I'm Jewish guy Bill, which, now listen, I, I am part Jewish. If you can't tell, I am. I know, it's right here. <laughs> the whole ponytail thing, that's not where it's at, just so we're clear. This is where it's at. And just to further illustrate this, because I want you to see, if, if I'm Jewish guy Bill, and I'm going through these struggles, even then, I'm, I'm one of the disciples, and I hear Jesus say, I'm going to die. Yeah, that becomes my focus, because I don't want him to die. So, so I'm Jewish guy Bill. Did I nail it? Is that good? This cannot go on social media because I see all kinds of cameras up. Here's the thing. What I want you to understand is that these people, they're no different than you are. And I know all of this is silly and everything, and I'm not mocking Jewish people. I'm trying to show you that if I'm them thousands of years ago, and I'm faced with what they're faced with, the, Dead sea, or the Red Sea here and an army here, do you know what I'm doing right now? I am freaking out. What am I going to do with my wife and kids? How am I going to protect them? I can't do anything. There's an army coming. There's no boat. There's no pontoons waiting on the side of the sea for us to cross. What am I focused on? I am focused on what's in front of me that I can't do anything about and what's coming behind me that I can't do anything about. But as a believer in God, the God Almighty that created the heavens and the earth, I cannot forget him when I go through difficult times. Amen? Amen. And it's easy to say this stuff, but it's difficult to apply it. Isn't it? It gets to be, it gets to be a struggle because sometimes there's not always that tangible, so what are you doing, God? But when we dismiss God from the equation, church, then our eyes are not looking for the doors that he is opening. He dried up the sea for the people to walk across. I, I had a thought this morning coming in. I was thinking about this whole picture of all of these Israelites. And I was thinking about them standing on the edge of that Red Sea right there. A wall of water on each side. They still had to choose if they were going to trust enough to walk through that. Didn't they? They still had to walk through the door that God opened for them. And you know, I wonder how many people stood on the edge of the shore, him and Han, as they watched others go by. Right? Because isn't that human nature? That's what we got to remember, man. These are just people. They still had to walk through the door that God opened for them. When our focus is completely on the problem, our eyes aren't open to the doors that God is providing for us. You see, because we have to remember this, God didn't come down and put a leash on every one of these Israelites and drag them through the Red Sea. He opened the door for them. 
when we are going through something, whatever it might be, you guys, when we are going through something, we have got to remember God in that situation. Because when we do, then we're more likely to notice the door that he's opening. You guys, Psalm 23 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I go through this very dangerous place, even though I walk through this difficult place, I will not fear because you are with me. Psalm 139, I go back to this over and over and over again. Where can I go, God, from your presence? Never says I'm not going to have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Never says I'm not going to go through difficult times, but says I'll be with you. In Psalm 18, you guys, this is one of my favorite psalms, verses 1 and 2. The psalmist, he, he talks about the Lord being a mighty fortress. Do you know what a fortress is? It's kind of like the whole kingdom mentality for many of us. We don't always understand the kingdom mentality because we don't live in, in that type of a government system, right? And so it's a little bit of a foreign concept. Well, this idea of a fortress, that's different too. The fortress, it's, it's like an impenetrable, imp, impenetra, just give me a second for crying out loud. <laughs> you guys are the greatest. Right away, it's like, man, let me just say it for you. It's impenetrable. Thank you. Five syllables. It's impenetrable. That's what he's saying. Listen to me now. That's what he's saying God is to him. You are a mighty fortress. Moses says to a million plus Israelites that came up out of Egypt, he says, be still, for God will. In whatever situation you find yourself in today or tomorrow or next week or in five years, what I would say to you is be still, for God will. You, you see, when we're standing in the water, one of you, somebody was in my office just the other day and we were talking about the water. I don't remember who the heck it was now. But when you're standing in the water and you just and you just calm yourself, you can see what's going on around you a little more clearly, can't you? But as soon as you start freaking out a little bit and start moving and trying to figure out on your own what you're going to do, what happens? You muddy the water up. And that's what so many of us do because we're trying to find the solution to the problem because I am good. I got to do this because... And so we muddy everything up, and then we can't see clearly what's going on around us. We can't see what God is opening, what God is doing. God is a fortress for us. Doesn't, it's not a fairy tale idea, you guys. And that, I just think sometimes that's our mindset when it comes to God. The Bible's not a fairy tale. It's not a Dr. Seuss book. It's real life stuff for real life people that go through some really difficult times. If you're finding yourself in a struggle, are you, are you being still and looking for the doors that God is opening? And if he is, are you walking through those doors?